the Home Builders Vermont Association of Central Connecticut, and uh, Sheila Leach with the HBRA of Central Connecticut is here as well. And today we are joined with uh, one of our past presidents of the association and, and longtime member, Chris Nelson. And uh, but more importantly, most importantly, Chris is the uh, president of the Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Central or of Connecticut, the, the statewide association. So welcome, Chris. Thanks. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. So uh, no, it's been certainly a. Uh, this has been a, a crazy, you know, two or three weeks we've been going through, and, and certainly everybody's lives is has been changed and, and upended. And um, wanted to have you join us today and talk a little bit about what you know the, the with the uh, big push with the uh, the state HBA, and obviously they're our lobbying arm and our advocacy arm in, in Connecticut here. And let's talk about some of the things that that have happened over the past uh, few weeks with uh, with the state efforts. Wow. Um, a lot <laughs> has transpired and uh, it's actually been really good because as the session was going forward, just in the past year, um, we hired Jim Paris and he has been building contacts within the legislature um, and the governor's office. And we have visited with the commissioner of um, not only housing, but uh, economic development. And so when this happened, um, when this whole coronavirus came out and they said they might be shutting down the state, uh, we pushed um, really hard to try to get connected to what was going on and, and worked with the commissioner for um, trying to get residential construction included as an essential service. So Jim did a great job, Greg Ugaldi did a great job and we were able to just communicate over a weekend with dozens of emails uh, as they were determining what was gonna be essential. So fortunately, uh, we were successful in that. And, and I can speak personally, we've got dozens of guys on job sites right now that would really be sitting home or getting right. late. Uh, so it's huge for us because we can keep our production going. And I'm sure there are literally thousands of people who are related to the home builders and, and working right now because that decision went that direction. So we we're excited about that. Um, and Chris, thank you so much uh, to you and to Jim Paris and the leadership there for all of your efforts in making construction essential in Connecticut. We truly appreciate all the work that you guys have been doing. And of all times, this is where we truly see the value of our membership. Oh, we really do. We really do. If we didn't have those connections and we didn't have Jim who has, he has really stepped up and, 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 and just drove that conversation. Um, there was, there was the initial, um, overtures from the governor's office that it was going to be, um, heavy commercial construction only. And we were able to get our industry built into that, or he was, um, so that worked really we just and and that's what that's what the state association is about just fortunately we're not having to fight the legislative session right now and the stretch codes and all those other things um i say fortunately but that's a small consolation compared to um the hardship that this this whole pandemic is causing everybody right now yeah, yeah. well it's it is as, as you were both saying, it, it really shows the value of, of being in an association and the value that we get from each other, too, because I know that the, you know, we were on the phone with, uh, with Jim or emails over the weekend and, and um, NHB was able to draft some language that they got in California's uh, uh, executive order, which, which Jim was able to use here, too. So it's, it's that kind of resource that, you know, whether it's other locals, the state, national, um, it's just there's a ton of resources out there for not just for associations, but for our members as well. And there's, um, you know, sample contracts that we've got a, a lot of different resources for for members that come from the state association and from and from the National Association of Home Builders. Yeah, actually. And, and this the reaction to this virus, um, because we were able to connect with so many other states and, and that network. Um, we were able to draft, like you said, with California, um, a position that was strong enough to, to carry the day. Uh, yeah. And with, without the network, that probably wouldn't have happened. And frankly, without the updates from uh, Central, 
on what our different subcontractors and suppliers are doing. Um, that's helping us stay connected too. We're figuring out, gee, who's who's operational right now, who's laid off people and has kind of uh, stepped aside for whatever reason. Um, this is a challenging time and and our network within the association has been huge in just uh, being able to get the product and keep people working. Yeah, so it is, it is a very tight knit community, that's for sure. And there's what's been what's been kind of fun to see is that we've actually gotten some feedback on those emails that we're sending out that people have been introduced that didn't know each other and they're actually doing business with each other right now, which is which is Great. we're we're continuing our networking <laughs> even virtually. So, <laughs> yeah. Chris, what are you doing uh, new in your operations uh, to practice safe uh, environment for your workers and uh, being creative with solutions? Um, that's a, a great, great question, and it seems like it changes daily a little bit. Um, in the office here, we're, we're dealing with the, the separations and the, the personal space and whatnot. Um, we're washing things down, it seems like, constantly. Um, we've actually got people even out on the job site that are wiping things down with disinfectants. Like there's um, machinery and that, uh, or, or doorknobs that people are going in and out. And you've got tons of people working through a job site. So there's a lot of things that a lot of people touch. So we're trying to keep uh, wiping that stuff down. We're flexing on schedules so that we don't have too many people in the same area at the same time. Fortunately, we've got enough going on that we can spread people out. Um, so that's kind of helping. Um, we're just trying to encourage people that if you want to work great, if you're nervous about it, uh, let's figure out how we can make the conditions better for you so we can get the job done. Um, and most people are really, really grateful that they can work because they don't want to be at home. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's working. Uh, we're just kind of backing off and flexing wherever we need to. And, um, and if people don't need to be in the office or at the job site and they can do something remotely, then we're letting them do it. Excellent. You uh, hearing any feedback from your customers and on their, you know, things are still moving forward. Obviously, if you're if you guys are that busy, that's that's great. And any any customer feedback that you've heard of? Um, as far as Mary Ellen um, has been working with a few customers, and and we're having to change the way we interact with them a little bit. We're not having the meetings. I actually am working with a few different people right now on the sailing side. So I would meet with buyers and discuss house plans and whatnot. So we're doing all of this online. Uh, so back and forth, sending plans, editing plans, uh, asking questions. And, and it, it's working. Um, there's a personal interaction that you kind of wish you could still have. Um, but so far, it's working. I think we know this is a temporary situation. We're hoping it's not too long. We have we lost one contract. We've uh, got a couple others that have delayed, and they said, "Hey, can we just stop and and kind of pick this up in a month or two, or whenever this kind of works itself out?" So we've closed our open houses, so we're not working with um, people off the street coming into the open houses anymore. We'll we'll meet with people, or we'll interact online by appointment but we're just not kind of inviting the public anymore. Yeah. No, it's interesting. We've heard a lot of that, that people are doing, you know, making selections remotely and doing different things that, you know, a lot of times used to be face to face and now they're finding very creative ways to, to keep things going, which is, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's going to be a different industry when we get out of this thing. And I think our job right now is to figure out uh, what's really necessary and, what do we want to? What do we want our businesses and our daily life to look like? Um, in the field, obviously, you got to get a lot of work done. But in the office, there are some things that can change. Yeah. Absolutely. Has anything changed with the towns that you're working with? Our town, we're working in two towns right now: Farmington and Simsbury, mm -hmm. and they have both been just super. Um, 
everything is uh, permits are online. We drop things off outside our office in a in kind of a lockbox kind of well a big box situation. Um, inspection some are closed. Some of them, they are still coming. They're outdoor inspections, even CO inspections. But we'll try to accumulate three or four or five different inspections and bring them out once at their convenience to try to um, just minimize their interaction and their trips. So it's going to be interesting. I think the municipalities are starting to find out that they might be pushing a lot of paper around too, that mm -hmm. ultimately might simplify their tasks a little bit too. Right. Yeah, I think there, I think a lot of businesses and industries will find different ways of doing business, and I think probably more efficient ways of doing business when this is all done too. So. Yeah. yeah, and we're all going to learn how to do video conferencing. <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll work through all these bugs. Absolutely. So, no, well, thank you very much, Chris. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, but uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is uh, again, we're trying to get as much information from the industry leaders. Uh, out to the out to the members, and um, we appreciate your time. Well, I, one thing um, I, I alluded to not having to work with the session right now, the legislative session, and probably that is not going to come back. We don't know that for sure, but we're just being vigilant. Um, so, at the state level, if we put out alerts and say, "Hey, we need you to call your your representative or whatever," please please do so, or call one of us and and um, get involved. But these type of relationships with legislature and with the governor's office uh, pay big dividends. And this mm -hmm. really highlights that. So if there's anything the state can do for any of the members that are out there, I heard an interesting, I was talking to Anthony DeRosa from Fairfield. He said they're being overrun by people who are trying to leave New York City. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're, they're overpaying for houses, they're overpaying for rentals, just mm -hmm. because want to get out of the city and that's going to be a really interesting phenomenon because people will start to work remotely and Fairfield might get busier in the weeks uh, yeah. or in the months to come. We haven't seen too much of that here um, but yeah if there are things anywhere in the state that we can do to uh, just to simplify some things on the state level we're happy to do it. Thank you for what you're doing. All right thanks guys. Yes. See you later. Thank you Chris. Be well. All right, you too. Thanks again. Bye-bye.